hockey. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. Happy Thanksgiving week. Happy Monday to you all. It is Judd's Hockey Show. Judd and AJ, Jesse Pierce will join us tomorrow, of course, for our uh, full strength show. But plenty to get to here, Age. The Wild comes off a road trip, which, again, this team just playing incredibly gutsy. I don't even recognize them, but it's, you know what, good for them. All uh, they do is salvage points, Judd. All exactly they do right. is salvage Down late points. in the game, you don't feel like it's hopeless and it's not a furious rally it's an actual one <laughs> that's noble and and of, of course we'll also talk about the fact that the wild uh was missing a star player in that last game against calgary i know there's frustration within the organization and i don't blame them uh but before we get to all that stuff i want to give a quick shout out to the uh exclusive personal injury law firm of judd's hockey show that of course our friends at nicolay law nicolay law knows that when you or a loved one gets injured ordinary life can come to a stop and things can get complicated during that time insurance companies are likely to pressure you they don't care if you get better they don't care if your bills are piling up and they don't care that you may not be able to work but russ and his team at nicolay law do they've seen every play the insurance companies have they'll make sure you get the compensation that you deserve after an accident so if you've been injured get minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers get nicolay start your path to winning at nicolaylaw.com that's n-i-c-o-l-e-t.com or give them a call 1-855-NICOLAY 1-855-NICOLAY russ right there in an empty U.S. Bank Stadium, always looking out for your best interest, which we certainly appreciate here at Score North. Uh, Okay, so the Wild goes on the road. They beat the Blues. And by the way, Blues, goodbye, because they fired their coach yesterday. Drew Bannister (laughs) shown the door. So Jim (laughs) Montgomery, who would, and this is why I love this league, had just been fired by Boston, signed a five-year contract to be the Blues coach now. And he was an assistant before he got the Bruins job. Of course, going back to what he was originally a coach at DU, I believe, at Denver, and then went to the Dallas Stars, had some personal issues, took some time off. But so the Wild beats the Blues. The Wild then beats again. It's incredible because the Oilers (laughs) are not this bad, but they make them look pathetic. They beat the Oilers and then come back, as Age just talked about, from a two-goal deficit late in that game against Calgary. They lose in a shootout, but they still get a point. So... In other words, five or six points, which is damn good. Uh, now, tonight, they are going to play the Jets Monday night. The Jets, of course, are the best team in the National Hockey League with 24 points and only four defeats on the entire season. The Wild is only, uh, what, four points back at 20. Uh, but within the game against the Oilers age, I don't think that that, that we have had an opportunity to talk about this yet. Um, Drake Kajula, a guy who is a journeyman now, Hits Kaprizov on a knee to knee, knee to thigh. It it, it wasn't good. And no. doesn't get a penalty. I don't even know if it was. I mean, I certainly cannot sit here, AJ, and say beyond a shadow of a doubt it was on purpose. Uh, but I think that subsequent reporting is the Wild is extremely frustrated because this is, what, the second time in three years now that Kaprizov has basically been taken out by a journeyman uh, of course, a couple of years ago, it was Logan Stanley. The uh, I think he's a defenseman for the Jets on a really cheap hit because he accordioned Kaprizov. Yeah. This was a hit I hate. I hate these knee-to-knee or knee-to-leg hits. Uh, it was a bang-bang play. My question to you off the top is, do you think it was purposeful, and how cheap do you think the actual hit was? I don't think it was purposeful because... <sighs> I I also really don't like the play, but I think it was more of an instinctual. Kaprizov is just better on his skates than Drake Kajula. They like that. There's no question. Nobody's going to argue that Drake Kajula is some ballerina out on the ice who dances like a gazelle. He's not. The lateral movement that we see from Kaprizov, Kajula just can't keep up with that. And his job when he's on the ice, and frankly, limited minutes, is to stop good players from progressing up the ice, getting his body in front of them. And I think instinctually that makes him stick his leg out a little bit. I don't think he intended stepping on the ice thinking, I'm going to go out there and hurt one of the best players. I don't think he meant that. But he has to have the professional mindset of, I can't stick my leg out. I I think it was a reactionary thing. Um, I hate it. It sucks. I mean, I, I, I want, if he's, obviously I don't want him to get hurt, but I want it to be like in a meaningful 
sort of like I want it to be worth it if that makes sense. I can't have Nolan Logan Flat Stanley falling on him. I can't have Drake Kajula, a guy who for, for some reason keeps haunting me in hockey as a he, he a former North, North Dakota player who just would terrorize um you know Minnesota teams left and right whether it's the Huskies whether it's the Gophers now doing this I think he even had a stint with the Blackhawks if I if my I memory do. serves me correctly I'm pretty sure um right. it's just a guy that I think Minnesota hockey fans might be sick of altogether it's who's who's next who's the next like fourth line journeyman in 2026 that's going to you know go out of his way to just give a little love tap as Kaprizov like crashes uh, crashes deep into the zone and he goes face first into the wall or something like that. I'm I'm sick of these types of plays. It's really unfortunate that it keeps happening, but that is hockey at the end of the day. But that's a long-winded way of saying I don't think it was a purposeful act by Kajula. I think that's just he kind of knows his job, and unfortunately, Kaprizov is good enough to where he's able to move laterally to where it sets up that kind of unf- like knee-on-knee, knee-on-thigh type of uh, mm-hmm. contact. So I don't think he did it on purpose to hurt him. And this is not going to solve it. But here's my question. When the uh, Drake Kajula of the world hits Kaprizov like this, how is it not a penalty? Like, that's what I don't understand. Like Kaprizov goes down to the ice. He is clearly hurt. He did come back, which I think got us all hopeful that he was going to be fine and would play against Calgary. That's not the case. He was on the ice as was uh, tweeted out today. Uh, I think Jesse Pierce, our friend who's going to join us tomorrow, tweeted out Mm -hmm. that he was skating, which is great news. But I don't understand how that's not a penalty. I don't understand how that's not something. Like, this is one of the best players. You've got to protect these guys at all costs. And I feel like if that had been um, Connor McDavid, like if like if the if the script was flipped. okay, and let's let's say and let's say that is a, you know, Devin Shore who played in that game. Ben McDavid. I feel like that's going to be called like, so this is what surprises me a bit is, and I'm not even asking for the wild to get the benefit of the doubt here. I'm asking for Kirill Kaprizov too. Yeah. So that's where I land a little bit on. Don't we want to, I mean, okay. So let's just say it's not on purpose. Let's say it's a two minute call. Okay. But still, don't you want to do anything you possibly can to protect this kid? So that's where I'm at a little bit of a, cause I'm not a, I'm not a homer necessarily, but you know when you have a special player that that player should get the benefit of the doubt on calls and and should be protected. And I feel like, to your point of, okay, if if we need to at least say this is not acceptable that a slappy just hurt Kirill Kaprizov again, isn't it some type of penalty? Because, I mean, Drake Kajula, Kajula walks away from that with nothing other than his opponent's hurt. Yeah. And what I, I guess what I will say, too, is I unfortunately, given the team, I think that you flipping it maybe isn't the best because how many years now in a row have we seen Connor McDavid get cross checked in the back of the spine, get yeah. ridden the wall, get tripped, get hacked. And there's just no calls. It seems like there needs to be some sort of whether it's on or off the books passed down from the league brass to the officiating crews that says, hey. Use your judgment. I think we all know who the superstars are. When you see something, say something, call something, blow a whistle. Because in in, in I, I'm sure somebody out there is going to say, "Well, no, everybody's playing the same game. You have to." No, not everybody's playing the same game. Right. Kirill Kaprizov and Drake Kajula are not playing the same game. If right. Kirill's playing hockey, I don't know what Drake Kajula is playing. You have to protect these guys. This is for a league that is, I think. Of the four major men's sports in the United States, by far the lowest grossing in profit. The baseball, hockey, or baseball, basketball, football, they, they all exceed it. You right. have to keep your stars healthy because that's what's going to get eyeballs. That's what's going to draw these people in. It's not, no offense, once again, it's just because he's the one who is, is the opposite party in this. Drake Kajula is not putting, you know, other than maybe his family, he's not filling seats. They're not people aren't coming in games to see Drake Kajula. People want to see Connor McDavid. People want to see Kirill Kaprizov. People want to see Nikita Kucherov. If these guys get hurt from a slappy, to take your term, th- nobody's winning. Zero people are winning in this scenario. Right. You have to you like, and sure, you're gonna have some weak calls. We saw weak calls 
on Saturday night against uh, against the Flames. That's these these crews are going to be fine. These officiating crews know what can and can't be penalties. If you see something against a star player for any team, why are we not calling it? You have to set some sort of precedent that these guys are protected somewhat more than another player. And then it's, you're going to get into like, well, when does Matt Boldy maybe get that type of, we don't need to cover that right now. If he takes a knee, if he takes a knee, I'm going to consider that. I, I hate, I hate that reaction. And to allow that now just means it's going to continue on and on. Like if it's a yeah. check in the corner, if it's a hard check and Kaprizov's shoulder pops out, that sucks, but it's a yeah. hard check. This is one of those open ice. Like there's a few things in the game today, partially because it moves fast. Okay. But there's mm-hmm. a few things that drive me absolutely bonkers that need to be cracked down on consistently. One is that any inclination to stick your leg out, in my opinion, especially against a star player needs to be called. Because there's no reckless. Because right, exactly, it's a reckless act. The other one, and I hate it, and it's punished sometimes, not all the time, is these glancing head blows. No, the cross check, the cross check. I'm actually, I don't like it, but these glancing head blows where the head is the point, and they're trying to cut down on that. But I mean, how many of these flyby glancing head blows, which are the worst because they're concussion central, and the body takes none of the hit. It's all the head, which is terrible. But I mean. The speed of the game is awesome and it makes it fun. But yep. we need to keep the we need to keep the players. I mean, the wild, not to compare it these two players, and I'm not, okay. But okay. Zuccarello's out. He was part of your t- top line. He unfortunately got hit in the cup by a puck and he was hurt. It's a legitimate, there's nothing you can do about it. It's unfortunate. Yeah. I think it was Faber shot. But yeah, anyway, it was friendly fire, even, but yeah. Right. So he's out now. Okay. I get that. But now that's one guy gone. Now Kaprizov takes this hit and nothing happens at all. And my question is like, when is he going to be afforded any protection? And and you might be right. Like the McDavid's of the world, but I am just, I don't think this league is in a place to afford its stars. Like tonight's game, Winnipeg and the wild. It should be Winnipeg's best against as much as, you know, against Kaprizov in the wild. And now I'm, I'm guessing he doesn't play. And if he does play, he's going to play hurt. Um, and look, guys get hurt. Guys are already banged up for various reasons that are that are you know understandable. Uh, and so I'm probably I'm probably preaching to the choir here, and I'm probably wasting my breath. But my God, when you have a player that good, and you're not going to see him now because Drake Kajula stuck his leg out, which isn't which really wasn't all that necessary, even if not intended. I got a problem with it because I want to watch this team at as close to full strength as possible, and injuries are part of the game, you're going to lose guys through ordinary ones, not ones that you would like to see prevented. And the first part to preventing him is to actually hand out penalties to say, hey, dude, you can't do that. You just can't. Sorry. Yeah, I I want to tune in tonight at 7 o'clock for a puck drop where it has Kyle Connor, Mark, Mark Shifley, and crew going up against Kirill Kaprizov, yeah. Matt Boldy, and crew. I don't want the wild coaching staff to have to discuss with the medical staff, okay, how bad is it? Can he play? What's he at percentage-wise? 65%? Okay, well, you know, it is 65% Kaprizov better than 100% Devin Shore? Like, who are we scratching in this scenario? And if right. we do play him, then the Wild, let's say he goes out there and, you know, something happens, Logan Stanley, I don't think, is he even on the team anymore? I'm not sure. Throws uh, throws a check on him into the corner. All of a sudden, five minutes into the game, he can't continue. The Wild are down a forward now for the rest of the game. They're already shorthanded at that point. It's, yeah. I we need there needs to be some. I think you're exactly right it, with, for this discussion, but I think it's just such a what is a catch type of thing. What is goalie interference? No, question. there's a lot of gray area. But until we see something at least on an uptick, I'd rather have them be more cautious with these players. I'm not saying bubble wrap them, but I think what we're both agreement is Always, there yeah. needs to be some sort of repercussion if you do take action like a leg stuck out or a glancing head blow. I still am not a fan of the repeated shots to the lower vertebrae with a cross check, which we cracked be- down on four years ago. And yes, now we don't it, crack down as much. Exactly. Um, there needs to be, I I'm with you. There needs to be something by the officiating crew just to protect these stars a little bit more. All right. So now the good stuff, that road yeah. trip, that road trip was really impressive. You know, I keep don't, 
it's not fair to say I keep w waiting for the wild to slip up because I don't, but I keep waiting for just sort of a natural in-season regression and we're not seeing it. And furthermore, what we're seeing is an approach that I, and we, we've talked about this uh, substantially, but that I absolutely love. But I mean, you go St. Louis, Edmonton, Calgary, and you get five of six points mm -hmm. and you play like th this team has. And so classic old school wild, the Oilers game, which was Thursday night, right? So Dreisaitl takes that long shot from a what behind his own blue line. He's going to dump the puck in. He yeah. actually might ice it. And the puck goes, I think, uh, off Kaprizov skates, through some legs. I think it went through Middleton's legs, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, long story short, Flurry allows this terrible goal because he's trying to sweep the puck away and it jumps his stick. And that is such an old school, here we go, here we go, right? Mm -hmm. Seven yeah. to one, Oilers, let's just pack up and go home. So instead of calling this professional, I'm going to change the conversation words and say this. Okay. The the inflappability, the unflappability of this team, like they were just like, okay, yeah. I, I just it's it's so hard for me to get my head around AJ that this is the wild. Like they literally they allow this terrible goal. Flurry allows it. They all are just like, okay, it's gonna be fine. They then score a goal that I think would have gone to your guy. Um, because it was gonna be Felino's goal, and then and then I think they said no, Trent and tipped it. Anyway, that's negated by an offside call. So now you got double whammy, a double whammy on the wild on the road. That's death. And they came back and they won the game. Like, and Hines gets a lot of credit here. Yeah, but I am just so or Saturday in Calgary, you're trailing by a couple. You're gonna get four of six points, which is pretty damn good. You can pack it in. You're probably done. You score two goals. This team's resiliency, this team is, it's everything that we complained about a season ago that they lacked. They were soft to play against. They, they had nobody ever really step up. They were meek. This team is, with largely the same group of people, the polar opposite of that. Yeah, they just seem so calm like they they seem just so they've bought in they they seem like they've bought in and like they know that what they're doing and their game plan it's probably going to work and they know that maybe we have we're going to run into obstacles we're going to come to a door that's locked shut and we're going to have to maybe adjust and figure out a different way to get in but they know after what that 30 seconds or whatever 30 seconds in 27 seconds in on the dry sidle goal yeah terrible goal they know, okay, you know what? Minor setback. We're just starting, we're just starting low. They know, hey, Stuart Skinner, it's a net across, you know, across the way there. Yeah. We're going to score goals. Butterfingers. And that's, I mean, how, I. How it, do the Oilers it, keep doing this to themselves? You, you have one identifiable problem, guys. Make a trade. Sign somebody right. well, else. I don't. And with Nurse insane. out, your defense is not. Like, like the Oilers problems are always the same, which goes back to the cap. Because you're, you're going to sign McDavid <laughs> to a huge contract. You got dry sidle. Hyman didn't play. Don't let Jesse Pierce hear about that. I uh, digress. That Oilers cap. <laughs> I digress. But but still, like that is a game that could have gone s sideways six ways. And they just come back. Calgary could have gone sideways. They just come back. Everything I hated about this team and ragged on for so long has been flipped on its head. I, I really don't know if we're watching like the same wild team because even we're not. when you look at it, a, a team that is they, they, on Friday night, they go up against a team that's led by Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Like offensively, that team is very solid. They move the puck well. They move the puck fast. They put a lot of teams in a spin cycle. The wild outplayed them. Like yes. despite that weird fluky thing and they went down a goal, they were playing from behind right off the get-go. And they just outworked them. They outplayed them. They generated more high danger chances. They forced them. And granted, like the defensive core of the, of the Oilers is not the best compared to a lot of teams. But still you're on the but road. You're, 
You're on the road in an opposing hostile building, and they were forcing chances to the high danger areas. That like that home plate that they talk about. Yep. They were getting right to the heart of that, right on top of Stuart Skinner and making him sweat. And yep. guess what? They made him sweat a lot. They come out of there flying high, and then they go into a game that I think on this show I've told you a bunch of times, Judd. I don't like blaming the officiating for any loss. It was bad. it was really bad. Oh yeah, it was awful. I don't understand how the, the it, we, people bring up like, okay, players have to talk after the game when they do something stupid. That's one where I want to say, hey, you know, Mr. Official, can I have five minutes at the mic? I just have a couple questions. The Lauco, the Lauco was incredible. I mean, that the Lauco is one was terrible. Goal to, and the guy that called it was the guy halfway down the ice. The Matt Boldy, uh, Ryan Hartman's getting cross checked. Yeah. In the in the slot, Matt Boldy yeah. comes over. He does what ninety five percent of players do after the whistle when yes. it's frozen by a goaltender. Yes. They walk up and grab a guy. That happens in every game. Seventy percent. Guess what? It never gets called except for right. that one time because we have to. Cho- we well, have to have offsetting. No, you don't have to. You can send one guy to the box. You're not no. required handcuffed to. Oh, you have to have one guy or just send Hartman. That that too. Like don't you send can, Boldy. Don't First take of all, the skill guy. Yeah, exactly. Don't take the skill guy. I will say this in that game, and and I like it, and but you got to be very careful. Hartman's coming closer to the edge again. Um, that like unhinged, right? Well, like doing things that are like, dude, you got to be careful. Like nineteen eighty four, you go for it, you bother everybody possible, but he's doing that stuff again. And what was it? Did they call goaltender interference in that game on a Hartman play? There was some type of play with Hartman against the flames where he skated through and the telecast was uh outraged about the call against hartman and i think he hit fladar and they didn't I've, call it i've got hartman to the box high sticking can i ask you about that too really quick and not sure. to derail your point yeah hartman gets his like toe blade on the right in the right in the chops of Nazem Kadri, and I get it. That's high sticking. Yep. But from my understanding of the rule is that no yep. matter what happens, you're always supposed to be in control of your stick. So when Kadri does it's his cool. little flail out, they screwed up and yep. catches him. That should also be high sticking on Kadri. Not no, or am I am I in the wrong here? No, it no, it should have gone both ways. Okay, I just wanted nope. to make sure because that nope. felt. But Hartman. So to to go back to my point though about. Hartman's game becoming a little bit un- unhinged again. He's going to get more calls against him because of that. So they goofed that up. Um, mm-hmm. But he just needs to be careful. He walks a very fine line. He walks a very fine very, line. Yes. And and because of that, officials start to look for a reason to penalize him or to ignore the fact, because I think he complains a lot. So I think he, he gets <laughs> e- ignored yeah. too. But overall, your point is well taken. It was a terribly officiated game. I, I mean, I still don't like the fact that Kaprizov didn't draw at least a call when he got hit, which I think was the same crew. So, like, th- that to me is a problem. Um, but I also agree with you in, I don't want to complain about officiating because you could do it in every sport, every single game. Yeah. You know, and, and TV started to complain a lot again, and I hate that. Like, FanDuel guys, just stop. Like, it's fine if there's a bad call and you want to talk about that, but then it just becomes this, well, they missed this and they missed that. And it's like, okay, then 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 it's got to go both ways. Then you got to say what they missed that Calgary didn't get too, right? Yeah. So, but yes, that was a really poorly officiated game. Unfortunately, I feel like we have too many of those. So uh, I, I got agree. Another question for you, but first I want to tell you about the official sports bar of the Sports Dad. That's right, Park Tavern. Located right here in my neck of the woods, St. Louis Park, Louisiana Avenue South and Highway 7. And have I got a deal for you. Black Friday, of course, coming up this Friday. And so you're looking for a gift, perhaps, for Christmas? You're looking for a holiday gift? Gift cards at Park Tavern. Go there in person. uh, Put down $100 to buy a gift card. And you are going to get two $25 gift cards for free. That's right, for free. This is a one-day only offer, but if you have a friend or a loved one who likes to go watch some sports, enjoy some great food and beer, Park Tavern is is the ideal place. And again, a $100 gift card gets you two $25 gift cards for free. You can only do it in person, 
And on Friday, Park Tavern again, located Louisiana Avenue South and Highway 7, SLP, St. Louis Park. Make sure that when you purchase them too, you tell them that the sports dad sent you. And while, we, while we're at it, I want to talk to you grill masters as well about my friends at Stoked Barbecue Pellets, company based right here in our great state. Stoked is the premium pellet that cooks anything you throw on the grill or smoker to delicious perfection. You can find Stoked at all 22 Fratelloni's hardware and garden stores. Perfect for pellet uh, grills, pellet starters, and really all types of grills. Find Stoked Barbecue Pellets, 50-count fire starter buckets, 4-count fire starter bags, uh, not to mention the barbecue caddy, which is an ideal thing for, for a grill master because it keeps everything in order. Again, ch uh, check out Stoked. It's all 22 Fratelloni's hardware and garden stores or go to stokedbarbecue.com. Don't go with the big guys. Go with Stoked. All right. Final point for you here. All right. So we were at the game a week ago Saturday against Dallas, 2-1 loss, uh, in which the, the Wild was without Zuccarello and Eric Sinek. And um, Marcus Johansson starts the game on the first line. He eventually is removed because, at least I thought, he was doing his typical, you're not really doing something, you know, give it more effort. You can't mm -hmm. just go out there and skate around. I actually thought, and this is from TV, so correct me if you disagree, Okay. But so on Saturday, at, at least, and I believe um, I believe it was the case against the Oilers as well. But anyway, on Saturday, the first line was Erickson Eck, Boldy, Johansson. I think somebody after that Dallas game had a little sit down with our guy because I saw a guy. It's incredible when he plays like he cares. He's a very viable player, and I would never sign him to an extension again. So just to make that clear, because I am not going to take the, oh, I'm in year one of a th three-year contract. I'll mail yeah. this in. But anyway, do you agree that he again looks like he is engaged? I thought the Calgary game was, I believe he had eight shots on goal, was an impressive performance. He, he was a menace. He was a menace against the fans. Menace. And a menace um, that I want to see that all the time. I don't know why we don't because he very is. He very much is capable of it against the Oilers. We saw that. And I, I, I think maybe I was very hesitant. So I was looking through not what, whatever the opposite of rose colored glasses are, you know, just, uh, gray colored, gray scaled yeah. Um, yeah. because I was like, okay, I, this is Marcus Johansson. This is going to be a, a flash in the pan, but then he did it again. And then some against the flames and you're exactly right. Eight shots on goal. Um, generated five, uh, 0.545 expected goals on ice. He he affected things all over the ice. Twenty two thirty of ice time. He. Why are we not doing this all the time, Marcus? Like, why well, does this? And pop the Dallas up? game. He was on that line, right? Yeah. Why? Or but he, why are we? It, it's it's crazy that you need to have allegedly, speculatively, somebody talking to you behind the scenes. I, I mean, I don't know to that show up fact. and play professional hockey. But what happened? Like, like when he plays yeah. like this, this is how I got suckered in in the playoffs two years ago because that season he joined the team from Washington. Look, He looked like he cared. Of course, he was, he was playing for a contract, which I believe he again is doing now because he is in, if I'm not mistaken, the second year of a two-year contract. But this is all I want, and I don't think it's a lot to ask because he's a good player. He's such a tease. You know, you, you know, know. what he's like? He, he, he's like – the Minnesota Wild are like – and you and I – are the like the nerdy kids like we we get all of our straight A's homework done no problem I know he's is. the he's the like head cheerleader everybody yeah. blah blah he's got the looks blah blah doesn't want to work so we, we we give him the extension uh you know we're gonna help with the homework we're gonna do all this stuff Never and then every once in a while he wants to go ahead and, yeah. and show up and you know show a little love blah blah I need I need the love all the time Marcus I need yeah. you to play well, like this all the time because you're much now. better um, it's more what happens now. What happens if the guy that we saw Saturday, and and to your point Thursday, what happens if that guy had shown up for the Dallas game? They on they probably at least go to OT if not. They're, that's a two one loss, right? Yes. Or three two loss. It's a one goal loss. Yeah. So what happens if he plays that entire game like that? Because you know that team needed a spark. And they mm -hmm. finally got it in the, the third, in part because they had to mix up the lines. Yeah, you're right. He is a tease. Drives me crazy, though, because I see eight shots on goal, and I see him engaged, and I'm like, dude, just like and, – and by the way, this team is pushing you to do that. 
I don't feel like there's a lot of guys who are, who, in fact, I don't think that right now, I I think there's guys that aren't great, but I don't think that there's many guys, if any, who are floating at all right now on this roster. So it's like when Marcus does it to me, it's more, it stands out more than ever. Anyway, I just wanted to broach eight shots on goal. Yeah, I mean, and if you look at like his past seasons, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 44 points, 47 points, 46 points, 57 points. For the following years, 14, 30, 29, 14, back to the Capitals for 29. And then in 2022, he's back to 46. He's he's able to play at that level consistently. And he showed that in his career. He He has not always been a flashy, streaky player that has like two weeks and then okay, now he's going to come out of the cave and it's the hibernation season is over. Last year, he had 30, so there was a regression. I think we were very frustrated. He has seven points right now. That We need more because we see that you can do that. It's just if if you have a healthy well, especially Kirill. Now. Especially yeah, now. and if you have a healthy Kirill, and when he comes back, a healthy Zuccarello, and, Matt, and the fact that you're on a line with Matt Boldy and we're still not seeing that, it's it God, it's just well and then we saw such it, a tease. It's and, so annoying. And then we see it and it's like, okay, let's let's harness that. And it's like, oh no, I think I'm not gonna play hard tonight. I'm, I'm, it, it, it's why I've advocated scratching him before. It's why and then I we advocate see it, scratching. We see him it on the international level instead of domestically yeah. for the world. world championships ridiculous. With a bunch of crap. All right, we're done. <laughs> uh we'll be back tomorrow with Jesse Pierce. Yeah. We will talk about what, what transpires in the Wild and Jets game. A game against, or a game between two of the best teams on the best teams in the National Hockey League. Yes, I said it right there. We will uh, see you later on Judd's Hockey Show.